Dan Fleck here with your national briefing. Making news today, the PM takes aim at WA over its border closures. New South Wales approaches a major milestone in its battle against the virus and a nurse accused of COVID vaccine fraud. First, though, taking a look at COVID cases across the country overnight. There's been 1,126 new cases in Victoria and sadly five deaths. While there's a few good news stories in New South Wales when it comes to the COVID situation, the state's tipped to hit a 90% double dose vaccination milestone either today or tomorrow, while a heap of rules have been relaxed for the fully vaxxed there today. Premier Dom Perrottet says it's great seeing the state turn a corner with rules easing up, admitting he's able to reunite with families sooner thanks to changes around international travel. It's great that we don't have to have bubbles anymore, that those who are fully vaccinated don't have to hotel quarantine. My parents flew in yesterday from the US after living there for 10 years and to not have to hotel quarantine, I know it was a relief for them, but for everybody who's coming home. New South Wales has recorded 187 cases and seven deaths from the virus overnight. There's been 13 new infections in the ACT, while there's been no new cases in Queensland. Meantime, the state's health minister, Yvette Darth, is hosing down talk of reopening international borders to follow suit with what's happening in New South Wales and Victoria, saying her patch is not ready. They're not risking bringing the virus in. Their virus is already there. It's throughout their community. So the risk is very different in New South Wales and Victoria by letting international rivals in without quarantining. It comes as Australia's travel bubble with Singapore kicked off today. Meantime, the PM's appealing to WA to reconsider its government coffers when it comes to reopening borders. If reuniting families separated by state lines in time for Christmas isn't enough motivation to ease restrictions sooner. WA Premier Mark McGowan forging ahead with plans to ease restrictions at the 90% double dose milestone, which won't roll around until January at the earliest. Scott Morrison says the state loses on multiple fronts if it remains closed longer than it needs to. Once you go over 80% and you keep things locked down, you are doing more harm than good to your economy. You are actually putting a price on Australians when you continue to put heavy restrictions on your economy once you hit 80% vaccination rate. Remaining in the state, an A Perth nurse has been charged after allegedly faking a COVID vaccination. The 51-year-old is accused of not administering a formula to a teenager. She's been refused bail ahead of facing court today. While across the ditch, there's been 190 cases in New Zealand and sadly two people with COVID have died Overnight. Get personalised hair loss treatment in five minutes delivered to your door. Clinically proven treatment for men and women. One pill taken daily. Thehairypill.com.au Luke Brooks is still planning to report for duty when the Tigers begin NRL pre-season training next Monday, but the halfback's future remains murky, with his management not happy with the ongoing speculation linking him up to the Knights. Meantime, it's day one for Tim Sheens in his new role at the club as head of football. To AFL, and it appears some players are doing everything possible to get fit ahead of next year. Bombers midfielder Andy McGrath joined the likes of Coleman medalist Harry McKay and Magpies vice-captain Taylor Adams at a Bayside Oval in Melbourne for training. The Wallabies have kicked off the European leg of their spring tour with a close and controversial two-point loss to Scotland this morning. They had two tries overturned in the first half and coughed up a penalty in the 68th minute that proved to be the difference. I got caught at our end in the last 20 through, through a lack of discipline and Maybe through some decision making. Aussie coach Dave Rennie there. Next up, it's England at Twickenham on Sunday. Download the free listener app now to get headlines and in depth coverage of what's making news in our backyard and beyond. Selling the family home, Miller, One and John put you first. This is SAFM Weather. Top of 18 today, but tomorrow there's a high chance of showers, probably in the morning and afternoon, getting up to a top of 18 and a low of 5, and the showers continue into Wednesday as well. For radio, podcasts, music and news, download the free listener app.